So uh, before we get started, I want each and every one of you to think of a goal you've been putting off. Maybe it's learning how to play the guitar, maybe it's running your first mile, or maybe it's learning how to bake a cake. Whatever it is, I want you to spend all the next few moments deciding what that one goal is. And I love that sound. <laughs> That's the sound of people thinking. Now, uh, like many of us, a few years ago I was put in lockdown. And like many of us, I became a version of myself I wasn't proud of. I wasn't sleeping right, I wasn't eating right, and the ways I was approaching each and every day became something I wouldn't be sh proud to share here at TEDx. And like many of us, I sat up one day and decided I was going to turn it all around. I was going to lose 10 pounds, gain it all back in muscle, save the princess from the castle, and live happily ever after. And of course, that didn't happen. My goal fell apart and it all went to the gutter. And why is that? Well, I think for me at least, it was because I was approaching the problem the way I was trained to as an engineer. And this right here is what we're supposed to do. We identify the system and its needs, we execute our plan, we see the outcome, and we build a new plan based around that outcome. Now, humans are complex systems. This approach works great for building phones and airplanes and widgets, but uh, we're more than that. I've been working with AI here for the past few years at Purdue University, and we're starting to see the same level of complexity in those models as well. Luckily, some people in industry have done some groundbreaking work uh, to develop roadmaps to help grow and improve these AI models with the same level of complexity we see even in our own lives. Now, these maps, they could look like this, one could look like that, and my personal favorite looks like this. And that's, that's a lot to take in. There's words with like 12 letters, a DNA helixy thingy, and the word continuum, which until right now I didn't know only had one M. <laughs> but luckily, I've had a lot of time to look at this graph. And let's take a step to the side and break it down with an example. And to do that, we'll use one of my first goals for working out. <laughs> so <laughs> in this example, our friend Michelangelo wants to turn this block of marble into that arguably uh, realistic expectation of a male form. Now, if he was using the traditional engineer approach, he'd plan an attack, execute a plan, see how it went, and run it again. Issue is, if Michelangelo worked the statue all the way from the head down to the feet and realized he didn't know how to make the toes, he'd wasted a considerable amount of his time and a considerable amount of his money. And it's the same with our AI projects. ChatGPT, an uh, AI agent I recommend you all check out if you haven't, experts estimate it took a million work hours to create it and millions of dollars to make. And that's just for the last version. The company can't be doing this over and over again or the costs would be astronomical. So instead, we've developed a new roadmap, uh, one that's based around AI, built for the complexity that it has. Now, for that, you set your end goal. That end goal for that previous example would, to be get my, would be to get my friend there absolutely chiseled. And then you set your needs. That would be consistency across the body, final presentation, and then you go on to your plan. You see how you did, but you don't go for the full statue. You go for pieces. You go for a hand or a bust or something part of the final whole. Then you see how you did, and you set more realistic needs based upon how you did. You set a larger problem, you set smaller needs to fill into that larger problem, you evaluate how well you could reach each and every one of those needs, and then you run it again. You'll also find that when you break it up into smaller pieces, your final result has such greater cohesiveness than if you were to attack it all at once from the beginning. Sadly, I'm still going through that process today with a lot of my projects, but that's part of the value of self-improvement as a continuum. Now, this is a lot to take in, so let's use another example, uh, one from my personal life, which is designing and executing a talk here at TEDx Purdue. So I first set my end goal, and that was to deliver a good talk. And then I set the sub-goals to meet into that, to educate people, make it enjoyable, to enjoy giving the talk, and to leave a lasting impression. And then I set the means to meet those goals, and there was a lot. 
And I said, yeah, means to meet those means. And there was even more. I need to be a writer, editor, advertiser, and it was scary. But then I made an attempt to take down as many of those needs as possible. And I did a decent job. I didn't get everything, but it was a start. And a start is always better than doing nothing. I then executed that plan, my talk, to some friends, and I got a few more notes than I bargained for. Some said I spoke too fast. Others said I spoke too slow. One guy just looked me dead in the eyes and said, you sound a lot like Elizabeth Holmes. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't think that was a compliment. <laughs> I, then I took all these notes together and I reran my plan of attack. And I got closer to my goals. And through iteration after iteration, I started to find my faults. And I had two large ones that were holding me back. First, the nerves from getting on the stage caused me to sweat through my shirts. And my vocabulary was terrible. Now that first problem, that can be solved with the exact approach I've been talking about earlier. I was trying to change a plan when I should have been changing a need. I didn't need to not sweat through my clothes on stage, I just needed to choose an outfit where no one would notice. <laughs> uh, until now. But vocabulary was a different beast. Mine was just bad. And I needed to reach a point where I could call it abysmal or appalling. I needed to give myself a skill set that would lead to continuous, lasting success. And when you hit a wall, especially with AI, there's one thing for you to do, and that is to turn up the heat, or specifically the temperature. Now, temperature isn't a metaphor or an excuse to use really poor fonts behind me, but it's generally one of the parameters you control when you're creating an AI. Temperature correlates to how much random nature is in your AI approach, and that could lead to amazing success or utter nonsense if you don't know what you're doing. So what I do with my goal, I started turning up the heat. I started doing things I hadn't tried prior to improve that vocabulary. I started with a word of the day calendar, but it was proving difficult to fit words like ostentatious and egregious into my speech. Every time I used them, they just kind of came out ostentatious and egregious. Uh, I then moved on to trying to read every night, just a half hour before going to bed, and it was great. It opened my eyes up to so many new ideas that empowered me to speak the way I am today, but it just wasn't helping me approach my final goal at the pace I needed. So then I did something I saw on YouTube. I, I kept this little book in my pocket every day, and every time I, cross, I came across a good word, I made an effort to write it down. From work, to the clubs, to classes, uh, even to my buddy's breakup texts, which has words I can't repeat for you all here at TEDx Purdue. I, uh, I made an effort to get them all in this little book. That way, when I was on my way to class or a meeting, uh, I could pick one out and make an effort to use it in conversation before the day was over. I made an effort uh, to just keep pushing forward. The, uh, diversifying the way I learned uh, led me back to my original goal with new and better ways to tackle the challenges I set out for myself. And there's one more challenge I learned from my interactions with AI, and it's that you can't compare one model to the next. In my professional life, I was working to create an AI agent that detected vehicles in a war zone. I needed to benchmark it. I was looking at detection scores from Google and Microsoft and all the big tech companies, uh, but things weren't adding up. Mine was looking at uh, camouflage trucks on a battlefield, and theirs were looking at cars and parking lots or open highways. These challenges were not and never would be the same. And it's the same with any one of our goals. When I was told I was invited to speak here today, I first sat down and watched TED Talk after TED Talk after TED Talk. And I had to recognize that I'm not them. I'm not Nardwar or Mike Rowe or some professor in a field of science I've struggled to pronounce. I'm me. I need to take on this talk in my way, in a way that makes me happy so I can speak in my voice. So when you all go out to take on your goals, you need to do it in a way that makes you happy. You each need to reach your own individual versions of success. So here's what I'm gonna ask of each and every one of you. I want you to leave here with a goal, any goal. And then I want you to break that goal down into any small pieces that you can. And then make an attempt any attempt to hit as many of those small pieces as you can. Uh, and you know what? You're going to fail. But that's okay. You don't have to start with the whole statue. Just start with a hand or even a finger if you need to. And over time, 
iteration after iteration, you will be successful in accomplishing your goals. Don't be afraid to fail. When I first wanted to take on this challenge, or the challenge with working out, I didn't know what was gonna go wrong. When I first started working out, I thought the issue was the runs I was going on, or the amount of weight I was pushing, but instead, it was just the amount of sleep I was getting the night before then that was holding me back. I didn't know what was holding me back, and I pushed forward and pushed through, iteration after iteration, to accomplish that final goal. Regardless of how hard we try, our needs are going to change. You are going to change. We could either be subject to that, or we could take that power into our own hands and lead ourselves through change to success. That means understanding our goals, changing our needs according to our goals through self-reflection, dedication, and changing them when it's healthy too. I believe each and every one of you has the capability to take on your goals. We just have to make sure we're setting them and more importantly, reflecting on them correctly. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you.